What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are here to talk about the Detroit Lions undrafted free agent signing, Javon McKinley from Notre Dame. So let's get it started. We're up, we're gonna bite a kneecap off and we're gonna stand up and then it's gonna take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're gonna take your other kneecap and we're gonna get up and then it's gonna take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're gonna take another hunk out of you. Before, before long, we're the, gonna be the last one standing. Welcome everybody to my video. Glad you guys are here. Yes, we're talking about another UDFA signing and another receiver for the Detroit Lions. We've talked about Sage Surratt or Sage Surratt. And we've also talked about Jonathan Adams Jr. But today we're talking about the receiver out of Notre Dame. And I don't know why I haven't done a video on this guy yet, but I'm glad I did today. And I'm glad I did because I'm very excited about this receiver. Like we have some very legitimate competition at the receiver position from these UDFAs. There, there's going to be some real competition here. I'm not really sure who's going to be the guy that's going to make the team. All right, I feel like we're going to have at least one of these UDFA receivers make the team. I don't know which one, though. There, there's real talent here. Like, we know what Sage Surratt has done with Wake Forest. We know about the how he's slow. You know, he's not that fast. But we know about the production that he put up at Wake Forest and how good and how big he was for the offense. We know how awesome Jonathan Adams Jr. can be, like some of the plays that he can make. But then you take a look at a guy like Javon McKinley, and I feel like this one went kind of under the radar a little bit. Javon McKinley had some ridiculous production in high school. I mean, just crazy production. It was like 25 receiving touchdowns, over 2,000 receiving yards. Crazy production in his final year of high school. He was a four-star recruit coming out of high school that was getting offers from some of the top teams in the nation. I'm talking about teams like Ohio State. Now, ultimately, he went to Notre Dame. And with Notre Dame, he was a deep threat. He was six foot two, 215 pounds, so there was a lot of excitement here. You know, Notre Dame had some weapons already. They had Will Fuller at the time that he got there. So there was weapons, and there's a lot of excitement around what he could add to this offense. But unfortunately, it never really happened. It never really clicked until his final year, which was last season for Notre Dame. On Javon McKinley's first year with Notre Dame, unfortunately, he didn't have any production. He had zero receptions, and he played in six games. Got a, Played a little bit, but didn't really have any opportunities. Lacked a lot of experience. But that's when injury struck a broken leg leg for Javon McKinley would ultimately force him to miss his second season as well. So a lot of missed time for Javon McKinley. Then into his third season with Notre Dame, there just wasn't a lot of production. He had a couple of moments. He had 11 receptions for like 200, what was it 268 yards and four touchdowns. He had a couple of big moments as that deep threat, 24 yards per reception. He showed some flashes against New Mexico, against Michigan, some flashes of what the hope was for Javon McKinley, but he just hasn't shown it up till this point. And then that's when 2020 came around. His final year changed. Chase Claypool heads to the draft, and this is when he breaks out. Statistically speaking, he broke out. 42 receptions for 717 yards, which was number 10 in the ACC, and also three touchdowns for McKinley. All right, you finally saw some of that deep threat, the excitement coming out of high school, averaging 17.7 yards per reception, which puts him number five in the ACC for that season. So his numbers just took off in his final year with Notre Dame. When he got the opportunity, his numbers took off. And I think this is probably why he's pretty much overlooked because you look up his highlights, they're probably not going to be the most exciting. He's not the most flashy, not the most dynamic player. And at the same time, doesn't have the huge production. He doesn't have the gaudy stats where it's like, oh, wow, he had 1,000, you know, 1,500 yards. Let's go check him out. He just didn't have that. He broke out in his final year, but that was it. Up to that point, didn't break out, and he has the injury history. So it makes sense why he was overlooked. Of course, he went undrafted. He was picked up by the Detroit Lions. So I just wanted to turn on the film and watch. I was like, okay, I got to at least watch to see, you know, him break out or whatever. I wasn't expecting a ton, but the first thing that hit me as I watched, the first thought I had was, this guy's got hands. Like, I was like, wow, he catches everything. Every time it was thrown his way, the dude caught it. I was like, this guy's really good hands, very strong hands. And I continued to watch, and there was a lot of things that I liked. Now, there's also a lot of things that I don't love either, but there are a lot of things to like, and he has, to me, the most important thing that you need as a receiver, the ability to catch the football that's the most important job to me as a receiver. He has that ability. Let's go through some of these pro day numbers because I don't think these necessarily helped him either. He's six foot two, two hundred and fifteen pounds, six foot one and a half. You know, he's kind of in that range. But I, I think he's six foot. We'll give him six foot two. You know, we'll be generous. He looks tall. Six foot two, two fifteen. He had twenty bench rest reps. He definitely has some strength. Okay, there's a lot of strength in his game, and it's good size. It's a good size for an outside receiver that also has lined up at slot as well. So you can kind of move him around a little bit as a chess piece to make some matchup problems for defenders. And because of that size, 
guys didn't like to press him and be that physical with him because he's a strong receiver. You got to know that about his game. So not a lot of guys pressed him and tried to play physical with him because of his size. But here's where the knock came in. It's his speed. He ran a 4, 5, 8, 40 yard time. Now when you're hearing that, you're like, ooh, that's not very good. It's not. It's definitely below our average, especially considering like, you know, NFL 40 times. It is faster than a guy like, say, Surratt, but it's below NFL average. It's not that fast. However, two important numbers out of the 40 yard time that I like to look at are the splits. I like to look at the 10 yard, the 20 yard splits, and that's where he actually thrived. He had a 1.5 second, 10, 1.57 second, 10 yard split, which is solid. It's very comparable to a lot of other receivers. So it kind of puts him in the same range as a lot of other guys. But then he had a 2.57 second, 20 yard split. And that is really good. That's fast. That's very fast in the first 20 yards. To me, it just seems like he lacks a little bit of that top end speed. So 2.57 second, 20 yard split. That's very fast for Javon McKinley, which means he's got a little bit of burst and he can get up to speed pretty quickly. Now his agility scores really struggled. His three cone drill, his shuttle drill, they were not that good. His agility is lacking and you can see it a little bit on the field, but there is enough burst and enough speed here. And there is some top end where he's at least a threat to be a deep guy, but then the size as well really helps him. Now, one big issue is his vertical. His vertical was not very good. It was like 32 inches. I mean, it's still high, but compared to NFL players, it's not that great. So it's not like a throw it up, go up and get it. And you can tell in his game, that's not really his game. Let's start from the beginning of the route first. Let's start from the release. As I said, his size allows him to really play through contact and guys didn't seem to like to press him. They pressed him, but they didn't play with a lot of contact against him because you know of his speed, they would just run with him. But what I do like about him off the release, press or not is that there's no wasted movement all right there's not a whole bunch of shuffling with his feet it's one step and go there's no waste to move it he realized hey i'm not the fastest guy i'm just gonna go all right there's there's no waste to movement in his game and since they don't usually get physical with him a lot of times he's clean and it can be like that quick okay one step jab and i'm gone and that no waste to movement head down let's get running as fast as i can really helps him be a lot faster than maybe some of those numbers will say some bursts off the line of scrimmage and he can stack guys because of that 20 yard split he can stack you if you're not physical with him, which a lot of guys aren't, he can get over top of you pretty quickly. Now that deep end speed lacks some of that. So he's not going to get tons of separation down the field, but he can get on top of a cornerback pretty quickly. So that is an advantage that he does have. And that can set up comeback routes that can set up, you know, curls, anything back to the quarterback because overcompensating, trying to get back into the play because they know you have a step on them early in the play. So he can get an early step, which is nice. Then as you go through the route, you go into breaking out of routes, you know, route running. Now this part is probably the part I don't like the most. I'm in route. St. Brown is a fantastic route runner. I didn't love that with Javon McKinley. It seemed like a relatively small route tree that he ran. A lot of drags, a lot of go balls, you know, just deep passes, and uh, also mixed in some out routes and a couple of comebacks. But there really wasn't a very deep route tree here. They didn't do a ton with this and, of course, a couple of screens. But it just wasn't that deep. And I think for him, what you notice is he doesn't get super low. He doesn't sink into breaks that well. And they're not super crispy. So it's <laughs> not super crispy. So they're not super crispy, which means it allows cornerbacks, even if they have, if he has a step, to kind of get back into the play a little bit. So he, out of breaks, out routes, things like that, doesn't really get a lot of separation. If anything, he loses separation out of those breaks. Now, he does stop well. He can control his body pretty well to stop on a curl, on a comeback, anything back to the quarterback. But running out routes, things like that, his breaks, they don't create separation, really. If anything, it kind of slows him down because cornerbacks work back into the play. So his route running is probably the part I don't like the most. And because of that, it can lead to inconsistent separation. It, and that's obviously an issue at the next level. So that's one of those parts of his game that could get better. But with his height, with his size, is something that just doesn't look that clean right now. Maybe you improve some of his flexibility. You get him cut, cutting out of those breaks a little bit quicker. But that was probably my biggest knock honestly against him on the film then the ball is in the air and now it's about making a play on the football and this is where he's at his best as we said his vertical isn't great so one part where he's going to lack is trying to throw a jump ball yes does he have solid size yes but dropping back and trying to throw it up and say go up and get it that's not what you want to do with Javon McKinley but his size does help what I love about him though this is my favorite part was he has very strong hands catches passes through contact consistently, but it's the ball tracking and it's the body adjustments to the football in the air. He adjusts his body so well to the ball to maneuver his way around the defender without getting an offensive pass interference, to make his way to the football, to put himself in a great position, kind of box out a defender. He adjusts to the ball extremely well. And he tracks it extremely well. Passes behind him, passes back shoulder, passes over his head, anything like that. He adjusts really well. He adjusts on a broken down play, getting to the sideline. And then it's about the toe tap ability. He toe taps. He gets two feet inbounds he's NFL ready two feet inbounds and he's got a great awareness like his ball tracking and body adjustments is next level and that's probably what made him so successful because it's not the top end speed that's going to blow you away it's not the vertical it's not the leap but for him 
He can get on top of you early, but for him, what makes him good here is the ball tracking and it's playing through contact, testing his body to the ball, but he'll play through contact. He does no worry at all about someone hitting him. He will reach out. He will snag balls away from his body. He'll fingertip grab. He'll catch him close to his body. He'll catch him behind. There's no worry for him about, oh, I'm going to take a big hit. I don't really want to stick my arms out. There was a couple guys in this draft that did that. He wasn't like that at all. Now, the only time he really worries about the defender is when he's adjusting his body back to the football to get himself in position. That is where he thrives. And that's why he's such a big deep play threat. The important part that he's going to need to add to his game is the intermediate effectiveness because he can definitely be a deep raw threat. And he could also be a mismatch because of his size, but it's the route running because of the lack of route tree in intermediate situations, all right? that That's where he needs to improve. And I think there's a lot of UDFAs we signed that could improve in those areas. So I think that's where it's gonna take improvement to move his production up. And that's probably why he's lacking a little bit of production now and why his yards per reception is so high. It's really tough to get a lot of separation at the next level by pure speed. Some guys can do it. Some guys are just fast. And we have a couple guys like Perriman that can do that. Khalif Raymond can do that. But for most guys, that's not how you're gonna do it. For a lot of guys, it's about adjusting and tracking the ball in the air, and that's where he thrives. Out of the breaks, it will lead to inconsistent separation. I think that's why a big reason is production isn't like insane because if you have inconsistent separation, it's gonna be tough. The NFL level, guys are gonna realize, we talked about they with Sage Surratt, and, and honestly, Jonathan Adams as well is like, hey, they realize you're not going to get be wide open. So they're going to take some of those chances because you're not going to be wide open. But Javon McKinley, what I think really is going to help him is his slot and outside ability while playing at that size. Because of that, they can make him kind of a matchup problem. You can line him on the outside. You can line him on the inside. Line him on the outside. A lot of outside corners, if they're smaller, you can go out there and he can have the size advantage. You can put him on the slot and then he can have a big size advantage there. So you can move him around a little bit based on what the defense is doing and then you have a size advantage, but he plays through contact really strong hands he is a phenomenal pass catcher seriously like the guy is really good his concentration is outstanding he's so focused and locked in once the ball goes in the air i just don't see it now he doesn't have some of the opportunities that our guys did drops will come up but playing through contact he's really almost seemed like less about what he did on the field it's about what he didn't do on the field he can play on the field, but the issue is he didn't have that crazy production on the field. He didn't have the consistent separation, but he didn't have consistent experience because he was injured, because he just didn't have opportunities. Now, in his last year, when he got the opportunities, you saw him shine a little bit against some good competition. I think we have a really strong three UDFA receivers that are going to compete. Someone's going to make it of the three. I think at least one will. And McKinley is going to be no walk in the park to beat out because he's got a lot of translatable traits. The biggest thing here is catching the ball consistently. And that's the biggest knock on Jonathan Adams. He makes some catches that are jaw dropping that are like, oh my gosh, how did he do that? But he has some drop issues. McKinley doesn't seem to have those type of drop issues, but at the same time, he doesn't have some of the crazy upside that Jonathan Adams does. And I, you know, he wasn't as productive as Sage Surratt was, but he can play the game of football. The upside may be questionable here, aside from getting better at breaking in and out of routes. But I think with his size, his hands, you can move him around. And that's where he can be a big problem because he can be a matchup problem. I mean, I don't know if down the road he's going to be, you know, huge big name receiver. But he could be, you know, someone that's productive when he's on the field. And he's probably going to be a special teams player early. I didn't see him block a ton, so I don't know where he is in that range. But I know with his size, I'm sure he could do it. Bring up his yards after the catch. This is another place where I think he lacks. He's not very scary once the ball is in his hands. They threw some screens to him. He wasn't making a lot of guys miss. So after the ball is in his hands... Really, it's just about speed, and he's not that agile. He's not elusive. He doesn't make a lot of guys miss. He might be kind of tough to bring down because he's big, but that's that's about it. I mean, honestly, he's not going to make you miss in space. So he doesn't really have that aspect to his game. So like I said, he's not scary, uh, you know, route running. He's not scary with the ball in his hands, but he can be a big play threat and kind of a mismatch problem. So let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.